Hey guys, this is Alan with Bothell STEM Coach, and today we're continuing on with some more AP Physics um, dynamics questions. So let's take a look at this one. Two small blocks, each of mass m, are connected by a string of constant length, a 4h, and negligible mass. Block A is placed on a smooth tabletop as shown above, so no friction. Block B hangs over the edge of the table. A tabletop is a distance 2h above the floor. Block B is then released from at a from rest at a distance h above the floor at time. Express all algebraic terms in terms of h, m, and g. Determine the acceleration of block B as it descends. Okay. So free body diagram on block B. I have mg going down. I have tension pulling up on this rope. This guy, I got tension pulling on this rope, and that's it. Right. So for this block, um, T which is his net force is just equal to m times his acceleration. Same for this guy, mg minus t is equal to m times its acceleration because these both are going to accelerate at the same thing. So if I plug this in, I have mg, that goes into there, mg minus ma equals ma. mg is equal to 2ma. The m's cancel, so a is equal to 2g. Okay, that's the acceleration of the block. Block B strikes the floor and does not bounce. Determine the time t at which block B strikes the floor. Okay, so he strikes the floor and he has to fall this distance. Um, so I'm probably thinking some kinematic equation. This is the one that comes to mind. Delta x is v naught t plus one half a t squared. Okay, um, he starts off at rest so the initial velocity is zero the acceleration is 2g wait uh it should be one half g i don't know why i said this one half how could it be more than gravity one half g so that means delta x which is h here h is equal to one half um one half g times t squared right so then solving for t this is 4gh equals t squared, or t is equal to the square root, the square root of 4gh, which is equal to 2 root gh. Okay, so that's the time. That's t1, I guess. That's what they're saying, t1. Um, describe the motion of block A from times t equals 0 to the time when B strikes the floor. So for C, what's, what's going to happen is he's going to accelerate then once he hits the floor, there's no more force, but he's just going to continue on at a constant velocity. So he accelerates at a equals one half g until t one, then moves at a constant velocity. D is describe the motion of block A from the time B strikes before the time block A leaves the table. So I, when they say describe, I'm not sure if they just want it in words. This is sort of how the old test used to be. I'm not sure, but let's do it like quantitate quantitatively. So what velocity does he reach um, as he accelerates? Well, he accelerates at one half g for this amount of time. So his final velocity would be his initial velocity plus a t. He has no initial velocity because he starts at rest. So 1 half g is a and t is 2 root g h. So his final velocity would be, these two cancel 1 half, um, g square root of g h. Okay, That would be his final velocity. d, describe the motion block a from the time block b strikes the floor to the time block a leaves the table. Well, so now he's moving at a constant velocity. of g root g h, right? Now determine the distance between the landing points of the two blocks. Okay, so this guy, he's gonna fly off the table until he hits the ground, right? So how far does he travel? Well, um, he travels um, a distance, let's see, it's his x velocity, 
So his delta x would just be simply, well, let's write all the full equation, 1 half at squared in the horizontal direction. But the thing is, is he has no acceleration in the horizontal direction because there's no force acting on it. So um, <clears throat> his velocity is g root gh times t. Now, how long does it take for him to hit the ground? This t is not the same as this one because this t1 represents when this guy hits the ground. But now that he's in the air, like he's going to go flying and we got to see when he hits the ground. Okay. So the, the, the time he's in the air, um, you, can, you can be given by in the y direction. It's based on how, how far he's going to fall here. So his delta y is equal to v naught t plus 1 half a t squared, again, in the vertical direction. He has no initial vertical velocity because all his velocity initially is horizontal because he flies off the table like that. And then um, he's subject to simply gravity. So this is 1 half g t squared equals 2 h. So again, 4 g h equals t squared. So t happens to equal square root of 2 g h. Uh, oh, sorry. 2 root g h. Okay, so I'm going to use this time. So it actually was the same time, but it's just coincidence because it was twice as high. I'm going to use this time into here. So g root g h times 2 root g h. This is g h times 2. So g, so 2 g squared h is how far he goes. Now, I think we're going to assume that this is less than 4h, which is the length of the rope. Well, let me see. Is that less than 4 This is... No. g squared is 100. No, that's like 200h meters per second squared. No, I, I kind of I messed up the unit somewhere. A is G. Okay, are these units right? This is meters per second squared times meters. This is meter squared per second squared. Oh, it's G over H. Oh, man, I messed this up. So T1 is 2. Um, it, H is on the bottom. I messed this up. Um, root G. H over G. So T1 is equal to root 2 root H over G. Okay, so his final velocity really is given by uh, G, uh, 1 half G times 2 root H over G. And that, these twos cancel, so this one's wrong. This is um, root gh. And that's meters per second, so that's units. So root g, there's no g here. So I'm excluding this g. So it would be 2gh. The problem is, is this 2gh is bigger. Like g is like 10, so this is like 20. Let me see if I, well, let's just make sure I... Oh, it's not. This is not 4gh. Also, again, I made the same mistake. It's 4 uh, h over g equals t squared. So t is equal to 2 root h over g. So sorry about the, the mess here. So let's erase all this and just redo it. Okay. So his initial, his velocity is root gh. The time is 2 root h over g. So I get 2 times uh, h. Good. And that's smaller than 4h. See that? So that means like it will land and like I was worried that the string would be too long. Like, like we would go further than the, the string would allow because the rope is really tying them together. But because it's less than 4h, we know that there's some slack in the rope, right? The rope's long enough to reach over there. Okay. So minor mistake there. But I uh, hope you guys found that helpful. Um, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching the video guys. Please leave a comment, like, or subscribe below to catch up more of the content and see any links below. I offer free homework help on uh, Twitch and Discord. See you guys in the next video.